Rome is like no other place in Italy. Families, shopkeepers, and travelers from all over the world converge on this small piece of land beside the swift Tiber River. They wander Rome's ancient cobblestone streets, worn down by centuries of celebration, sorrow, and political winds of change that continue to this day. Fountains filled with cool water break the backdrop of the tan-colored buildings. In Rome's many piazzas, travelers and locals rest. They eat and talk about their plans for the evening. Here in Piazza della Rotunda, it feels the weight of today's problems are lost in the vast history of which this building and its massive dome have been witness. Right now I'm standing in the piazza that is in front of the Pantheon here in Rome. This is one of my favorite spots in ancient Rome because the building itself is so incredibly well preserved. I'm fascinated by the story of this building. It was originally a pagan temple dedicated to all the pagan gods. And then after the time of Constantine in the 300s AD, the Roman Catholic Church decided to turn it into a church, naturally. Behind me is an obelisk that is positioned in the center of the piazza. You see the cross at the very top? The obelisk, as many of you are probably aware, comes from Egypt and before that Sumeria. And the obelisk was a symbol to show human order, how human society is to be structured from the top down. And so the obelisk was important to the Romans and they took the obelisk from different places around the world and brought them to the streets of ancient Rome. And when the Pantheon switched over from a temple dedicated to pagan worship to a uh, Christian church, the church naturally put the cross at the very top of the obelisk to symbolize God at the top of everything. So in this one piazza there's countless untold stories that date all the way back to ancient Rome. Let's take a quick look inside the Pantheon. Above me is the oculus, the perfectly circular opening in the ceiling. Rainwater comes down through the opening in the ceiling in the oculus and it hits these marble floors and around the perimeter of the inside, the interior of the Pantheon, there's actually a drainage system to get rid of the water. Here's an example of one of eight pedestals which at one time held the statue of a pagan deity. Being inside the Pantheon, you can't help but feel small, even insignificant. But when you leave through those massive metal doors, you feel energized to continue exploring this magnificent ancient city.